to God. Whew. If you turn in your Bibles to the book of John, or maybe you don't need to, go to the, go to the letter of John, the first letter of John. I'm just going to start in the book of John. You all know this, and then we'll, we'll be moving to the letter of John real suddenly. So it'll just be easier that way. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, Jesus Christ, Yahshua Messiah, is the Word of God. And he was in the beginning. In the very beginning, he was, and he was God. Amen? And nobody can deny that. He was God. He was the almighty creator. And he spoke the universe into existence. That gives you the power of words. That's why when I come to these little children and I say they're blessed children, they're going to be blessed children because of the power of the word. When you curse them, you're going to curse them. But when you bless them, you're going to bless them. When I say this man's going to be blessed, he's going to be blessed because it's the word that is spoken. Amen. We have a problem just uh, with our words. We need to change the way we talk. We got to realize that there's power in them words. We need to call our children blessed, not cursed. We need to call our car blessed, not cursed. We need to call our garden. My tomatoes blessed and they're going to ripen. In Jesus' name, I got to quit saying they're not ripening. And amen. And all things were made by him, and without him, not anything that made was made. In other words, Yahshua Messiah, the Alpha and the Omega, which he says over and over again in the book of the Revelation. He is it. He made it in the first place. It is his. Amen? Amen. That means even as decrepit and sinful as we might be, he made us. And he made us in his shadow. And he wants us to be transformed into his image that we might have eternal life. I think sometimes we ignore what this whole thing is about. We're, we're looking about, and you hear so much preaching about how that God's going to bless you here, and he will. Don't get me wrong. But we hear all this prosperity preaching that we forget about the main goal. <laughs> the main goal is to cross the finish line in Jesus. The main goal is to be going to his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. How much good would you do to it if God blessed you with all the riches of this world and lost your eternal soul? Lost your eternal spirit, was damned into hell. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some people tell me hell's just living on this earth. This is just a warm up, man. Right. Amen. Right. Oh. We watched this guy the other night. I watched a little bit of it. Linda watched the guy that God had sent him to hell. It wasn't pretty down there. Amen. It wasn't pretty down there. So he made it. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. We at this church are a light shining out across Oxford, Iowa, and Tiffin, Iowa, and Iowa City, Iowa, and, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. And yet, yet, the light is not recognized. People do not respond to the light. The light shines on them, but they want to darken their face. They want to put on sunglasses. In fact, they might want to put on them rose-colored glasses so their light looks good, but they don't see the true and piercing light of the Word of God come into their life because that might change them. God bless that child. God bless the child. And the man was sent from God, whose name was John, and the same came as a witness to bear witness of the light that men through him might believe. We are sent. I'm not John the Baptist, but there's a man sent by John, and there's a man sent here of Ray, and there's a man sent here by the name of Doug that bring forth the light of God, and we're to bring it into a community. We're bringing it into an area. We're bringing it in to change things. Amen. That's why we continue with the TV. Keep beaming it out there. Keep beaming it out there. I've got it, and... and He's on vacation today. I got a young man that got fired up a couple of weeks ago that called me wanting more tracks, more flyers. He's out hitting the streets. He's seen a light come inside somebody that looks so unlikely. Amen. But when the lights come on, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Something happens. Amen. Amen. Who knows what it'll, who it'll reach. Amen. It may reach some poor soul that needs Jesus so bad. Yes, Lord. Yes. So down and so out. Amen. It's hard for a rich man to come to God. 
Because he got everything. God deals with the poor and the hurting. He can take the rankest of sinners and turn him into a saint. We just watched that happen during the revival. The rankest of sinners. Hallelujah. I knew I'd tell some stories today. Hallelujah. Any, any other preachers ever hear of the Welch revival? You ever hear it, Brother Doug? <sighs> Justin Roberts. I think I got his name right. Roberts was his last name anyway. He was the evangelist of the day. He was like, you know, the uh, Rod Parsley of the day or something like that. And uh, these two little old women prayed for two years. One of them was blind and one of them was deaf. Yes, Lord. The blind one would hear for the deaf one. The deaf one would see for the blind one. And they prayed, and they prayed. They had a little old church over there in Wales. And there's only three people coming to Sunday, them and one other, and the pastor. There was nobody going to church. Everything was dead. It was a rough area. Everybody talked like the devil. And it was all coal miners. And they called or wrote to Mr. Roberts, said, we want you to come have a revival. God told us. We've been praying for two years, and God told us to have you come. There was a preacher's conference. He was a keynote speaker. I can't come that, at that time for revival. I am the keynote speaker at the United Christian, or whatever, you know, whatever it is, the big camp meeting. I'm going to be the speaker. I'm going to speak for thousands of preachers. I can't be there. Didn't deter them, little old ladies. They made up flyers, and they put them all over town. And they said, Roberts is going to be here. And they just trusted God. Roberts is sitting on the front row of the church at the convention. Sat there. He was next to get up to speak. He was a keynote speaker. He got up to the pulpit, and he says, God told me I have to go to such and such a village. I've got to get in my carriage and go right now. That God said the revival is going to break out there, and he left the convention. Yes, Thank you. He got there in the greatest revival in the late 1800s broke out from that Wales revival. I'm talking for two, one blind, one deaf, for two. Revival broke loose. People came from everywhere. It was a tremendous move of God. Tremendous move of God. And out of that revival came the Pentecostal renowned. People started speaking in tongues. They didn't even know what it was. Start speaking in tongues, getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, getting baptized in Jesus' name. Things started out of that came Smith Wigglesworth, the great revivalist. Oh, we were talking about this this morning. Wigglesworth couldn't talk. We're talking about the gift of preaching this morning. Yeah. Wigglesworth stuttered. He could not talk. And until he got baptized in the Holy Ghost, he'd try and preach, and nobody knew what he was saying. And then he got baptized in the Holy Ghost and Spirit in other tongues, and he could just preach, just flow out of him. Well, I know a man like that down in Florida. We know some other, don't talk so good till they start preaching, but boy, when the Spirit of God comes on them, the power comes out. You know that's God, amen. He'll use the most unlikely of characters because somebody got next to God. Somebody prayed. Somebody cared. Somebody pressed through. You think them, you just think about it. You think that blind lady and that deaf lady really, really, really uh, wanted to pray all the time and do all the, no, they were pressed by God. You know, it wasn't always comfortable. They became that living sacrifice we talked about this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's go to the letter of John. Which was from the beginning, 
which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. You don't suppose John had a handle on that Jesus was God, do you? He told us in his book, then he tells us in his letter. It all refers to it again, amen? And he calls him the word of God. And that's the word of peace, the word of prophecy, the word of power in Jesus' name. Amen. And the life was manifest and we seen it and bear witness and saw unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. Hallelujah. Isaiah, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to do the best I can at quoting it. Isaiah 9, 6 says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. That's the guy we're looking for. That's the one that's leading us. That's the one that's delivering. It's Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, the one and only true God. Hallelujah. John knew it. Hallelujah. It's too bad through the ages of the church started to not recognize who he was. Who he was. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And when you recognize who he is, you can see miracles. Amen? It's hard to get a miracle when you don't know who God is. Unfortunately, in the church today, so much of what calls himself the Christian church, they don't have a clue who God is. Amen. They don't have a clue. Buddha's got the same God. The Jehovah Witness got the same God. The Mormons got the same God. Ain't none of them similar. The Shiites got the same God. The Muslims got the same God. The sheep got the same God. Hallelujah. I, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that this pastor has studied every one of those religions. I know more about them religions than most people in them. I know more about being a Mormon than most Mormons know. I know more about Jehovah Witness than most Jehovah Witness know. Because they, the people sitting in the pews are treated as dupes. Like they don't know anything and they just so they get, the, get their money. I know more about being a Mason. Oh God, here comes trouble. I know more about being a Mason than the Masons do sitting here in Oxford. They think it's just a little club. But the 33rd degree masonry book says masonry is not a religion. It is religion. They claim them all. The 33 degrees are different religions. Each degree of enlightenment, you're supposed to get more enlightened, is another religion. You're supposed to study and learn about that religion. And the 27th degree is Luciferianism. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, some people are stirred. Hey, Amen. Uh -huh. How did I get here? You never know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Only God knows what's going to happen. <laughs> the odd fellows are the enlightened ones. They're higher than Masons. You know, I was raised up to be one. You can't join the odd fellows. You have to be born into it. They laugh at the Masons. And yet they have coalition way up the lighter. Amen. They know it all. Get directly from God. All in the disguise of these little clubs. Leading people astray. Taking their money. The Mormons try and pass themselves off as Christians. False religion. They have a different God. Amen. Their God was once a man. Came down and had sex with Mary. And he's only God over this one planet. Every planet gets their own God. And if you're a real good Mormon, you might get your own planet. With your celestial wives and have all the... Never mind. <laughs> You might want that, and that's true. That's their theology. And the life was manifest, and we saw it. They saw the life that created the universe in Jesus Christ in the flesh. There he was. Thank you, 
They saw with their own eyes. They touched it. Inside of Jesus Christ, that man that God prepared to hold his fullness, the fullness of the Godhead is revealed. Amen. We can't know anything about God except for Jesus. You're not going to learn it through some other guru. Which we have seen and heard declared unto you that ye also have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Yeshua Messiah. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. We should be full of joy when we figure out what we've got. We have got it. Amen. There's masses of people that don't have it. That don't have it. That it's bounced right off of. Or the call didn't connect with them. Or just just masses of people that simply do not have what we have. Yet in our flesh we want to mully grubble. Huh? How many of you grumbled this week? Raise your hand if you grumbled about something. Huh? You know what you got? You got Jesus. You got eternal life. You got the Prince of Peace. You got Father God residing inside of you. The fullness of the God as it is in Christ can be in you if you get you out of the way. Who do we study in Romans this morning? It's supposed to be a living sacrifice. That's our reasonable service. That's, that's just reasonable service. It sounds like a big thing to me, but it, God says it's just what you got to do. Just, in other words, you ought to be a lot more than just a living sacrifice. Yes. I'll be in contact with God all the time. God ought to shine out of you. Hallelujah. I told him in Sunday school how the, the, the man where I took my transmission that blew up uh, recognized me and George were Christians just by the way we acted and talked. This then is the message which you have heard from him declared unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Yes. Right. We, lie. we lie. And they do not have truth. Yes. Lie, yeah. <laughs> oh, if you're just a Christian on Sunday morning and by Monday noon you are the incarnation of the devil himself. <laughs> You are not a Christian, and you're not going the right way. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm not sure. I hope every one of you in this house will be recognized as a Christian when you go to the transmission, man. But maybe you won't. Maybe you won't. Maybe they're going to think you're that grumpy old religious biddy from the other across the street or the meanest man that ever lived. Because you're not actually acting in Christ. You're not letting him shine out of you. That you are acting in the flesh. And you're, you're letting the pains and... <laughs> pain. This world get you down. What? I'm not bragging. I'm just stating fact. What did I do last night when I got a cramp in both calves? I hollered Jesus. I could have hollered ding, dang, dong it. But I hollered Jesus. And I forced myself to my feet and stood up a little bit and it was gone. Whew. You can holler Jesus or you can curse. And if you curse, you just get worse. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just like, look, what we did this morning. We, we have created, God has created a miracle in our midst. We're going to get through church with these kids in church and they're just behaving perfect. Because God is in it. And we start speaking over them with his word, what we're supposed to speak over them. Amen? Instead of calling him Dennis the Menace, we're going to call him a man of God. Amen? Amen. I'm guilty. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Okay, how many in here have I wounded a little this morning? Raise your hand if you've been wounded. <laughs> Come on, Ray. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> well, you on TV, it's going to wound you. You're not here. You're sitting watching on the boob tomb, think you're going to get that way, that you can be a closet Christian. God doesn't recognize your prayer. God doesn't recognize your faith. He only recognizes you when you're in the body. Amen. And you can't get in the body through the mail. Unless you're so crippled, you can't get to church. God will not excuse not 
joining together. And I was pretty crippled and I still came to church. In fact, fortunately at that time, which not now, this program was on in the university hospital, in, in the hospital. And I would watch this and I would watch other preachers there. And I would sit there and weep, lay there. I wouldn't sit there, I would lay there in that bed of affliction and weep because I could not be in fellowship with the brother. Now some of you come to see me and so forth, and people came to see me and so forth, brought me food and, and, and were kind to me and stuff, but it wasn't the same as being in church. And I'd sit there and weep through that whole program, watching my dear wife filling my shoes, preaching, because I had no one else here to preach, amen? And I missed the fellowship. You, when you can't go to church, maybe you'll actually miss what, you're, what you got. You need to appreciate what you got while you can get it. Because you might be strapped down. They might be sawing your leg off. Right. Oh, 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 we've had a lot of leg. <laughs> There's a curse on the feet, I'm telling you. I pray the blessing of the gospel of peace on my feet. There's a lot of foot trouble around here. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, I've missed one. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Sin. I wish I, I don't have one. I'll have to bring one. Bow and arrow. You know what the definition of sin is? Or a gun at work. <laughs> of course, probably dangerous in here. It's to miss the mark. To not sin, you make a bullseye every time. None of us make a bullseye every time. If you only miss it by a quarter inch, you still sin. If, if you were shooting a rifle, okay, a lot of us do that, and you uh, got four nines, you thought you did real good, but you still sin because you only get ten, only when you hit the mark, see, right on the mark. If you were shooting clay pigeons like we did Friday night and you shot at 20 of them and you missed one, you missed the mark once, you sin once, see. That's what sin it is. So should we quit shooting because we missed the mark? No, we keep shooting, trying to hit that high calling, trying to make that bullseye. But when we fall short, we, we're almost done. Little children, these things I write to you that you sin not, and that if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation for our sins. When I was a young man, which was a long, long time ago, I worked at a place in Coralville called the Picture Fame Factory for minimum wage. And I cut out picture frames all day long with the big saw, zoom, 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 zoom. There was a pair of twins that worked there. And every day or so, the one was a perpetuation for the other one, a substitute. They looked exactly the same. <laughs> Once in a while, one of them would come in and check in for both of them. Right. Something they could get double pay. <laughs> but nobody knew which one was which. And so, if one of them showed up, they thought it was the one, see, and it, it, he got paid. You understand that? Well, that's how Jesus is for you on your sin. When you sin, he is your twin brother, and he comes in and takes care of your debt. That means you should strive to be the living sacrifice so that you look like Jesus on the inside so that he can be your perpetuation. Amen? You get it? That, that's a big word, perpetuation. I <laughs> Substitute for Kinsman redeemer. He's your kinsman that redeemed you. He's our elder brother that paid the price. Amen? Amen. And he is a preparation for our sins and not for ours only. Tinkle, tinkle. But also for the sins of the world. And hereby we know that. 
We know if we keep his commandments, he that say I know him and don't keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But those who keep the word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. There we are, know you are in him. He that abide in him, him ought to also walk, even as he walked. Today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your heart. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has yes, said unto Lord. the churches. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Today hear my voice, hear my heart, hear what I am saying unto you. Listen and repent. Repent and every sin shall be removed. Honestly repent and every sin shall be removed. Today listen unto my voice. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Hallelujah. How could God work any more perfectly? Because the prophecy huh, lands right here. He that abideth in him might also walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write to you no new commandment unto you, but the old command which you have from the beginning. The old command is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you which is true in him and then you because the darkness is past and truth and light. Jesus said, these are my commandments. Love your Lord, your God, with all your soul, with all your heart, and with all your might. And then love your brother, your neighbor, as yourself. And follow those and you'll do well. Hallelujah. Repent, the prophet has said, and turn, and God said, through the prophetess. Turn from your wicked ways. Hallelujah. And I will receive you unto myself. Hallelujah. You that are watching this broadcast, heed the words of the word of God and of the prophecy as you see the gifts of God operate in the congregation. Change your wicked ways. Turn to God and let him Turn to Yeshua and let him clean you up. Number one command, love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. If you love God, you want to be in his house. You want to be surrounded by his people. You want to be covered by the mighty hand of God. Amen. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. For anyone who would like to get saved right now and turn away from your sin, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I confess you right now as Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. To contact us, please go to anchoredinfaith.org and click on Contact. Then fill out the form and click on the Submit button. Someone will then contact you within a short time. Social media video platforms carrying our programming can be found by clicking on TV. The latest episode can be viewed directly on our homepage at anchoredinfaith.org. Late breaking information will be posted on facebook.com slash AIFGC. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church.